how much would you take or what will motivate you to sacrifice? What motivates you to sacrifice for other people? And, uh, and we talk about, oh, talk about in a context, uh, talk about how would you sacrifice, how much, what would motivate you to sacrifice for the people that in the same faith, you know, the brothers and sisters in Christ, what motivates you? So today, uh, we're going to learn a little bit. I uh, uh, hope that we can be an encouragement, a reminder. Now, before we uh, talk about uh, the, uh, the sermon, we have to have this understanding first. Uh, all right. Now, we, from the scripture, we derive doctrine. We talk about who is God, who is Jesus Christ, how do we understand God, how do we understand church or Holy Spirit. These are doctrine we derive from scripture and it is final. No? And uh, so what we believe based on the scripture. Okay, so that is non-negotiable. Lah. But in the same scripture also, there are times we derive teaching on how we should live our life. Derive teaching how should we treat one another, especially those who are in the same faith. All right? And this, this kind of teaching, this kind of rules, it's, uh, it's created within the community of faith. You know? So the rules or the laws are being made within the community of faith. And uh, as we know this, uh, we shall not and we should not be confused by the law of the land. We will say rules and regulation outside. Lah, okay? And uh, we should not confuse. Uh, and uh, we should not say that, oh, those are the rules outside. We should not abide to it. No. no there will be rules of the land. There will be rules of the Bible similar to this uh, uh, tax. Uh, actually, you know, the Persian imposed tax to the people and the people unfortunately have to abide to it because that's the rules, uh, the law of the land. And here we also have our own rules here for government. government uh, all right? So we do not confuse. We do not, uh, we, we, we shall not uh, only listen to a certain part that benefit us, those who not benefit us, we chuck it away. Uh, it should not be like this. Lah. So let us have clear understanding first because, uh, uh, like I said, Nehemiah here, he is going to propose uh, some, some guidelines for the believers how we should treat one another. But before we talk about that rules or talk about that guideline, what would pursue you? What would challenge you? What would motivate you to follow or to sacrifice? for one another. So that is one big question uh, we need to ask ourselves. Uh, what motivates you to sacrifice for others? So today is somebody called sacrifice to love. What? The very first thing. What motivates us? What motivates you? So the very first thing from this scripture here, you know, we must realize one important thing. If we read verse 1, uh, that the people of Judea, they outcry. You know, they, they cry out. The people of Judah. So, uh, who comes to help? Nehemiah came to help. So, the very first thing you must recognize this important uh, value, important fact is that we are in one household of Christ. I use the word pistis. Lah. Pistis is actually a Greek word. A Greek word that uh, has two meanings. One is faith. No, faith is also pistis. The other is belief. So, do you have faith? that you are one household of Christ. From the biblical teaching, you know that those who believe in Lord Jesus Christ, we are no longer called strangers, we are no longer aliens, but we are the same household of God, same household of Christ. Do you have faith in that? Do you believe in that household, that we are one family? Because if we are not able to go past or go beyond, if we are not able to go beyond this fact, then it's very hard for us to sacrifice, is it not? Uh, in our flesh, lah, in our flesh, if it's not your, if it's not your brother, if not your own children, uh, talking about blood related, uh, if it's not, is it not harder for you to sacrifice if it's according to flesh? Lah? Is it not? Uh, hey, if it's not our own, then it's very difficult to, or rather, it's hard to motivate us to sacrifice, to love. So when we sit around here, you know, Ephesians, uh, Ephesians uh, 2, 19 to 20, I think there's a scripture here. Oh, let us read this scripture together. You know, uh, let's go together. One, two. 
So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. There are plenty of other scriptures that talk about the same thing. Romans, Galatians, you know, talk about. Okay, and this is the fact, is that the moment we believe in Lord Jesus Christ, we are no longer aliens. We are no longer strangers. We are a one family of God. So a person seated next to you, can you accept the person is your brothers or a sister in Christ? Okay, can, can you look? If you don't, if you pass it, you are not ashamed to look. Uh, you you turn turn your eyes, turn your eyes to the corner, and see who is sitting next to you. <laughs> Can you accept the person seated next to you, in front of you or behind you? They are the brothers and sisters in Christ. Are you able to accept that first? Are you able to accept? I know not a lot of people uh, respond. Uh. So I don't know whether you can accept or not accept. Uh. <laughs> okay. So if you are not able to move beyond this point, uh, okay. Uh, there's no point to go through the remaining of sermon. We all can go home already. <laughs> the fact is that, you know, when you talk about this, what motivates us to sacrifice for others uh, is to remember that we are one body of Christ. We are the family. Uh, we are the brothers and sisters in Christ. And because we are one family, who else, who else would help one another first? Then the Judean outcry, their problems are problematic, no more food, people are sold in slavery, no more money. Who came to help? Nehemiah came to help. Why? Because they are one household. They are one people of God. So the very first thing, uh, we must, I want to encourage us, even to challenge us, to accept one another. Your people that are sitting next to you, probably from different place. Probably the first time that you see her or him. Probably, you know, from different cell. Or even, you know, uh, uh, something that you may not be very familiar with. But are you able to accept? Are you able to accept this truth? If we are not able to, then it will be very, very difficult. But today, I would like to encourage you to go beyond that. Alright? For this is our faith. And this will move us to sacrifice to love one another. So if we are able, uh, are we able to move on or not? Yes. Oh, it's still very hard. Uh, nobody respond to me. Probably, <laughs> probably very new, is it? Or very, still very cold. <laughs> uh, you know, let us have this. Uh, and uh, let us respond. Uh, if I say yes, uh, can you, if you want to respond to me, uh, at least say amen. Uh, cannot, cannot. Amen. amen. Uh, a little bit better. Uh. Uh, it's not that I force you, lah. Don't think I force you, lah. Even, even though it seems like I'm forcing you, but then it is a scriptural truth. All oh, that we can uh, hold on to this. Now, if we are able to accept one another as the brothers or sisters in Christ, then what can we do? The scripture here, uh, or how Nehemiah responded first by love, to love and do the right thing. You love for the person, do the right thing. Now, um, let me explain a little bit uh, 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 what, is, what happened. You know, you know, when the people at that period of time, they mortgage their land, uh, they have agreement, they borrow money. Now, this is actually, it is okay. It is not illegal thing. It is all right to do for the own Judean look for another family to borrow money to, 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 to mortgage land. It is actually okay. It is within the rules, all right? And, um, and uh, uh, so if we... But when we talk about finance, we talk about money, you know, of course, it's very sensitive. Lah, huh? Okay, it's very, we have to handle it with, uh, with very, very careful. You know, but the basic line is that no, it is all right. It is okay. No, even at this case, to borrow and uh, to borrow money from the same family. You know that is how you should take care of one another. In this uh, scripture, okay, whatever deal that you 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 you, you agree on, no, it is all right. Now, of course, it's not just talking about 
you know, business transaction. Uh, we have some students here. You know, it is also in our life principle. Whatever you agree on, the basic principle is that whatever you agree on, honor it. Oh, uh, we have group of students here. Uh, I've been through a students also. We have group project, is it not? No, we have group project. If you're agreed on, you do this part, you do that part, you do this part. You're agreed on, then order it. Don't come, no, you say, no, I, I will do this. Uh, even at the last week, uh, before you need to submit, uh, you say, I cannot do that. <laughs> oh, I cannot. Then you're not honoring. So in all aspects of life, whatever agreement that we agreed on, being a Christian, all the more, we need to honour it, all right? Now, the problem here is, of course, they agree on, but they are charging interest. That is what gets Nehemiah oh, scolded the people, all right? Oh, they, they, they charge interest to the, uh, to the people, and when they repay, they repay with interest. In, in a context of the Old Testament, it is not allowed, lah. Oh, you read the Mosaic law in Exodus 22, it's not allowed uh, to, to, uh, to, to impose uh, interest to the mortgage. All right? And uh, it's not allowed. Now, <laughs> remember just now I said, uh, rules within the community and rules in the government, they are not the same. All right? Uh, so do not take this passage go to the bank tomorrow and say, why you charge interest to my car loan? Why you charge interest to my house loan? All right, it doesn't work that way. Lah, huh? All right, but what is the basic point here or basic line is that whatever is agreed on, you must honor it. But the problem is that they charge interest. It's supposed to be, no, no borrow money, but they charge interest. So the situation is like, no, the people are, do not have food already. You know? They have to use the money to pay uh, their tax. They use the money to, uh, to, for their food. And they have lacking already. And now the richer one, the richer one, the, the Judean who are richer one who are able to lend, they are squeezing out. They are squeezing out every single bit out of, out of the poor. So is this right? And this is the problem. Is this right? Is this the right way? to treat another person. All the more, we are talking about a Christian believer or the same faith believer. Is this supposed to be that we, need, we, we, should, we can treat you know, to take advantage of other people, especially the same faith? And therefore, Nehemiah scolded the people, the rich ones, the, the ones who are able to lend. You know, they should not do this now, of course. Uh, now I say, no, uh, you must take this as oh, a lot of wisdom on how to handle. Uh, I keep on mentioning again, no, the key thing, the basic foundation uh, is what we agree on. No, what are the things that you agree upon, then we should honor it. We are not talking about charging interest or not. Huh? Today's business transaction is a whole lot different. No? How you negotiate with your client, how you negotiate with one another, doing business and agreement, no? doing a project or, or any other thing. Okay, What we agree on as a Christian, you should honor it. And this is a basic line. Okay, Whatever that is agreed on, we should honor it. And that is what it's supposed to be. Nehemiah did not scold them, they mortgaged the land. No. Out of desperation, they need to, they need to. But what is not right is that they take advantage out of it. What is not agreed on, they add on unto it. And that is not right. So therefore, in our terms today, today now, now even uh, 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 we have to take this matter a very, very careful, you know. And uh, um, of course, I keep on saying that uh, be a Christian, we should honor it. You and I know that <laughs> uh, Christians, they are not all perfect people. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, we may, well, Christian also uh, may not be able to fulfill. But in all best possible way, or oh, this is the guideline that we should have. 
if we are going to have some agreement with brother and sister in Christ in the same family, we are talking about family of Christ. Okay, let's be reminded to honor what is being, uh, is being agreed on, and we should not, you know, we should not, you know, uh, 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 to add on or to stress out, you know, whatever that is not agreed on, and to mistreat other people that what is not agreed on. So let us get, you know. Uh, godly counsels. I know not all the time. You no, know, if ta- if everything's work out well, it is fine and good. But what you know, what is more important that we should you no, know, uh, we should not because of this transaction or or dealing that we cause someone to lose the faith. We could cause someone to you know, give up on church and the faith. There is a guideline or there is a hope, you know, if by all possible means, by all possible means, prioritize souls over matter. Now, by all possible means, it is not by 100%, okay? By all possible means, we should prioritize soul over matters. The meaning you say, let us work it the best. Don't squeeze the situation, you know. Don't distress the situation until so much the person lose out the faith in the Lord and leave the church. Now, just now, I want to pick up again. No, unfortunately, uh, you and I know that we are not all perfect. Uh, okay, uh, we may, in the past, we may encounter even Christians themselves may have no, go against their own words and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and causes so uh, stress and uh, mistreat. It's very unfortunate. But God, it is not God that mistreat, right? So let us hold firm in this. There will be disappointment time. Unfortunately, probably sometimes made from this, even from the Christian circle. But last, not uh, lose our faith. But now coming back to this scripture or this passage, you know, it is within our power. It is within our jurisdiction. May I encourage us prioritize soul by all possible means. Okay, by all possible means, prioritize soul over matters. It is not going to be easy. Uh, so that's why I get godly counsels. Okay. Uh, we have, I believe, you know, there are a lot of us here, they are working. A lot of us here also have some form of business. A lot of us here are also committed Christians. So let us you know, ask advice from one another. If there are a certain situation that causes uh, disagreement. Let's come together. Let us try to resolve things out within the family. So, first thing, now you treat this person as a family of Christ. Then love the person. Do the right thing. Not only just do the right thing, the third part, of course, is to sacrifice. Now, so when you talk about sacrifice, uh, it cannot run away. Uh, there will be at least one or three things that are involved. What are the three things? Your time, your effort, and your money. When we talk about sacrifice, it is always, it will definitely hit one of these three. Your effort, your time, and your money. Okay, so if, if it doesn't involve any of these three things, uh, then it's not a sacrifice. It is probably just your saliva. Only talk, <laughs> okay? It's not sacrifice. You look at Nehemiah, uh, he, he gave up all these three. You talk about time that he has left the palace as a cupbearer. Go all the way back to Jerusalem. Is that not time that is involved? Effort. He was a cupbearer, you know. He does not need to go back to Jerusalem. He does not need to, 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 to put himself into hard labor. But he went back to rebuild the wall. 
And lastly here in this, uh, in this passage, we, we read about him that he gave his money also in verse 10. You read about it, that out of his own money, he purchased back you know, the slaves, their brothers who was being sold into slavery. So, sacrifice. If you see, if you're able to see the person seated next to you, you're in front, the back, you're able to see them as a brother's sister in Christ. Sacrifice. Be generous. Uh, something I want to encourage, but with wisdom also. Please have wisdom. Not just generous, <laughs> helping everybody and without knowing why are you helping. Be generous yet with wisdom. There's a quote I put in here. See, I, I'm not sure which quote, which person said about this quote, but I heard about it. And uh, 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 many years already, they say, when in doubt, err in generosity. When you're in doubt, when you're not sure actually this is real or not, err in generosity so that you help, you're able to help the person. You know, uh, the scripture also did mention uh, something similar. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is from the scripture or not, but then uh, in the scripture, there is similar uh, Galatians here. Uh, can we all read this together? Galatians 6, 9 to 10. Okay, one to go. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Uh, quite a number of months ago, I think I forgot, uh, two, two, three months, um, because I'm staying in the, uh, in the church compound, so there are times there are people walking in with a certain need. So there was a time, <laughs> there was one time that uh, about four or five o'clock, okay, I was uh, walking down here with my son, uh, Eshel. Then came one person who came in with a need and uh, asking for, for money. Lah. Uh, so of course, the person who come in with a need, he will tell a story. Lah. Uh, what's the story? What happened to him? And... Uh, and uh, of course, when you talk about story, all these things, if I'm going to use my logic itself, lah, if I'm going to use my logic itself, I think, I think, I will be able to come to a conclusion, basically, this person is just lying about the situation. Okay. And uh, what makes it even more, uh, more, more suspicious of a story is that uh, because uh, he say that uh, this person said that he's a uh, he, he's a faith a believer, uh, uh, then uh, he say he, he was the one that encouraged me. He said, uh, "Do you pray?" I'll say, "Of course." I'll say, "Of course." I pray. Uh, when you pray, when you pray, are you able to see the future? She asked me, uh, "Can you see the future?" I said, wow, I said, I cannot. Uh, when I pray, I cannot see the future. You cannot. Uh, I cannot. <laughs> the person said, I cannot. You pray, you can see the future. So, wow, very good. <laughs> I said, you're very good. I also need to learn from you uh, like that. Right? But then, of course, I look at the, the, you know, how it described. It just doesn't really, you no know, puzzle just doesn't really mix. Uh. So, that uh, he said he wanted some money to go down to Brunei. Uh, to, uh, but then uh, we have, must have wisdom uh, not everything that we need to help but because of the situation he came with a daughter you see the 3 years old I think 3 or 4 years old at that period of time because being children being children uh, my son also came down Ashel being the youngest and two of them can start to play together and uh, running around the compound so my heart also kind of like you no know, ache and uh, no really uh, uh, I felt compassion uh, for this uh, man and the daughter. But at the same time, you know, uh, uh, I said, I cannot help. As in, I cannot buy you a ticket to Brunei. You know, because I know the story is most likely it's lie. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Most likely it's probably just a lie. Okay. But I said, so I can give you some money so that tonight, tomorrow, 
you have some food for yourself and your daughter. So when in doubt, no, err in generosity. No, since that day, no, never came back. So I don't know what happened. Was it really real? I, I have no idea. Okay. But the scripture told us to be generous. But have wisdom, lah, huh? Uh, don't be a fool. <laughs> don't be stupid. <laughs> I don't know whether you'll find this offensive or not, uh, this word. But uh, the more I go and visit other churches uh, to uh, listen to the sermon, uh, wow, they all use this word stupid uh, very easily. Uh, no? <laughs> so I'm not sure whether you find it offensive or not, but it is the truth. Uh, it's the truth. Have wisdom. Okay? Don't simply believe, you know, in, uh, during the MCO, the last few years, uh, there are a lot of calls, scam calls, you know, scam calls, don't easily believe in it. I've got so many of calls, I'm so fed up. Uh, so one of the calls, uh, I play along with them. <laughs> so I play along with them. And uh, halfway through, uh, I started scolding them, uh, scolding them already and say, people are in the hardship already and here you are trying to cheat people. Go and get a job, uh, what are you doing? The next moment, yeah, no more already. <laughs> Turn off the phone. All right. So have wisdom. No. And yet, be generous. No. We may not be able to know the whole situation, but when we're talking about the same faith, same, let us err in generosity. But one thing I would like to really set and advise you know, for us is not to take for granted. What Nehemiah acted, he does not disagree with the system. He does not disagree with what is being, uh, uh, agreement that is being made, uh, borrow, lending, all this. Okay? But he's disagree when someone is taking advantage of other person. So be it you're a lender or you're a receiver, both we should not take advantage of each other. Amen. If the Lord has caused you to be generous, if the Lord has empowered you to be generous, no, be generous. For those who are receiving, let us not also take advantage of saying that, wow, this person is very generous. Every time I go, I surely can get. You know. Let us not take each other for granted. Let us not make generosity no? Uh, or make the mockery out of generosity. So, Nehemiah has set a certain rules for the community of faith to follow. And I believe it is worth to consider because it builds the community of faith. The moment Nehemiah set this rule, it rebuilt the people of Jerusalem or the Jews together. So this morning, as we, oh, as we reflect upon uh, this scripture, let us also oh, learn from Jeremiah. Do you have a heart for the people of God? Do you believe, do you have faith that we are all one family of Christ? If we are all, let us love. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do not take advantage. Do not no, take advantage of one another sacrifice that we will rebuild this family together. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I want to come before you this morning. Lord, we all look to you with, uh, with assurance, oh Lord. And I pray if there's any one of us uh, having here, uh, is here having some difficulty in life, we are not just talking about finance difficulties. We are probably, there are some with relationship, family, uh, even the school, college. Father, I pray that we may continue to trust in you, that we may continue to look up to you. And I pray, O oh Lord, among us here, Lord, that you have given us the ability, you have given us the ability uh, uh, to, to bless, the ability to help. And I pray, Lord, that instill this generosity in us, O Lord. 
that you cause us to be generous to one another. At the same time, Lord, I pray that you give us wisdom, that we will know how to handle situation with brothers and sisters in Christ, that at the end of the day, we are able to build this family together. We are able to help another family to stand up on their feet once more again. Or any individual to rebuild their life once more again. Help us, Lord, to give us this sacrificial heart. Instill this to us, O Lord. Father, I pray as we look beyond ourselves, help us to look into the family of God to help one another. Thank you, Lord. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.